The underworld was boring, so I came back to check things out. But I gave you a whole month's time, and you've only made it as far as the Imperial City. If we have to wait until the marriage ceremony is concluded before taking action, that's a bit anticlimactic, I'd say. Lovely moon out tonight, isn't it, princess? Would you be interested in enjoying the moon of West City with me? Princess, you don't seem very distressed. You're even more outstanding than I imagined. Hello, my future bride. I am Lucien. Now, am I qualified to take in the moon with you? I was waylaid on the way here. The envoys accompanying me were all killed, and the marriage seal was stolen.
But I can attest that the person you saw today, princess, was not Lucien. On this point, you can send your underlings to confirm this yourself. If we're really going to be wed, naturally I'm happy to be frank with you, princess. I've heard that the Princess of West City was exceedingly intelligent, and she selected the good and the capable after the old Emperor passed, and has maintained stability in Westia. But sure enough, seeing her with my own eyes is even more impressive. The person behind the scenes is the current Emperor of Jubilee. Your uncle is probably also involved. This marriage alliance between Westia and Jubilee is of decisive significance. After the ceremony, you will become the rightful Empress of Westia. An easily manipulated puppet by your side day and night would certainly be better than your uncle if one wanted to make a move against you. And even if they can't move against you, the person by your pillow will have more opportunities to influence and control you. Whether for your uncle or Jubilee, it will do more good than harm, and what they do will be well within their rights. You raised four questions, Princess. I haven't finished answering yet. This indeed should have been an ordinary marriage alliance. But even a worm will turn. All I'm doing is adding just a little more fuel to the fire. 
If I resisted them and made it to Estia's imperial city, then some things would remain hidden for a lifetime, and I would go on living in fear. So I might as well give them an opportunity. After all, sometimes the muck and rot needs to be washed away before one can make a clean cut. Grand Prince Lucien is merely a title to you, Princess. He could be anyone. So have you enjoyed the moon tonight, Princess? The Princess was kidnapped last night. If the kidnapper really wanted to get away, they would have already done so. And yet, it was not until nine o'clock this morning that the city sealed off its gates. It appears your uncle isn't too interested in actually rescuing you. Even if that means marrying a puppet clearly conspiring against you? Princess, how does it feel struggling all by yourself this whole time? But I don't want to. <laughs> That's simply not true. I am just an ordinary person who has long admired the princess.
After learning about the princess's imminent marriage and not being able to hold back my feelings, I decided on this course of action. I love you. Could you possibly choose me to be your husband? General Lucas. Heaven's Fury Pass is Westia's most critical defensive point. If it falls, it is only a matter of time before the rest of Westia falls with it. I heard that the ruler of Westia died of illness just three months ago. Even for the brave and fierce Iron Army, that must be a blow to their morale. That is... What is the Princess of Westia doing here? Perhaps my best adversary.
and you seem a little tense. Although I would love to wait with the princess for all the proof to come out, it seems we have rather a lot of time on our hands. We might as well find a way to pass the time. How about we consider getting to know one another before our nuptials? You're looking at a higher protege of the unpredictable master of Butterfly Valley, an heir to the previous dynasty with surpassing talent and dashing good looks. Are you sure you don't want to chat with me? You prefer the fairy fox? don't seem to like listening to storytellers much. The last time I heard one was five years ago. The old general took me before we went out to the border pass. After returning from the frontier, in order to keep up the appearance of the legendary Lucienne, I couldn't just duck out whenever I wanted to listen to storytellers. Call 500 times a day, wheeze out of breath after taking 10 steps, go to bed when the sun comes up, and rise again with the moon. As long as the destination is reached, the path taken isn't that important. If my being attacked can expose the rot, Bring with it more advantageous results, and let the princess see clearly the good and the bad. Then from where I'm sitting, of course it's advisable. All I can say is that this all started with your little night expedition, princess. My original intent was simply to reveal myself and stir the pot. But when you showed up there, everything changed. What are you afraid of? If none of this had happened, then right now, we'd already be wet. 
and I would call you my wife. I'd even be qualified to plant a kiss right here. After you. I'm tired. Well, after all, I'm to wed the princess, so naturally people will be envious. Besides, these constant attacks only serve as more proof that I am the real Lucian, don't they? Why not? I don't feel like this is such an imposition. After all, I still need them to keep giving me opportunities for the princess to get to know me better. And to see if I'm qualified to stand by your side. That depends. On who's asking? So this is what the finest cat house in Westia looks like. I did actually want to visit the cat house here, so I guess today we're ahead of schedule. Such a nice surprise. Is my wife being jealous? Fine, my future wife. 
Rather than saying that I'm curious about the cat house, it's more that I'm curious about all aspects of the place you lived in. Whether it's horse racing tracks, taverns, schools, or cat houses, I'm curious about all of it. That is indeed the case. But the way I'm using right now is my favorite. Don't think only of evading. The young princess that I remember was someone who met adversity head on. That will all depend on how far you go to prove yourself, princess. I never knew it snows in West City as well. How is there a plum grove in the western regions? I never knew the desert could be so peaceful. When I was young and came to the borderlands, yellow sand filled the sky, and everywhere I looked was vast and desolate grassland. The wind in the sky was full of aggression and lethality. Rotting carcasses and bones were piled up everywhere. You couldn't even tell who they used to be, or where they should be sent back to. Nor could you tell if they were resting in peace in their own homeland. But I once saw with my own eyes a streak of red amidst the desert dust. It was a girl not yet of age, 
still too young to have started wearing her hair in a bun. She was dressed all in red, like a raging wildfire, standing in front of a war drum at the rear of the Westia army. The drum was twice her height, and the drumstick was thicker than her arm. But still she swung down with force, again and again, and the sight was as booming as the pounding feet of a marching army. They said that after the Battle of Heaven's Fury Pass, that girl had never worn red again. Of course I worry. I worried that the princess's uncle would grow too powerful, that Jubilee's puppet emperor would do all kinds of foolish things. I worried that the princess was perhaps a fool too. However, I still couldn't help but hold out hope. Hope that the girl I held as an adversary may grow up to be a more excellent being. So I delivered myself before you, also partially out of my own selfish interests. You were right. 
Being born into a royal family decides what you must do and what you cannot do. But there are still some things I want to do for myself. And this is one of them. Looks like there's no need for your secret guard to make an appearance. then I would just carry on with my plan to annex Westia. Of course not. I also want this world to be rich and fertile, and last for tens of thousands of years and never end. It's not called Westia, nor is it called Jubilee. It is more majestic and grand than you can imagine. It embraces all rivers like the sea, and it has one and only one name. That is the world. When I came here, I intended to make that into reality myself. But you are more incredible more enchanting than I'd ever imagined. Will you choose me and help me make it a reality? You can pull out its fangs, or... Tame him, and have him become your fangs. Greetings, royal uncle. I am Lucien. It was the least I could do. He deserves to be honored. It appears my wife is still angry at me.
I was only worried we'd have another runaway bride. That would be truly embarrassing. But my wife, you are also testing me, so we're even. So what is your choice? That's not enough. Not enough. You haven't given me enough of your heart. Well, there's the rub. My heart is ponderously heavy, and once it's yours, princess, you can't just throw it aside. I admit, this way has occurred to me too. After all, I was with you for over a month. I had plenty of opportunities. Indeed, but I could be even more dishonest. I am an insatiably selfish person. If I give my heart, I need to receive yours. So I hope that I may have the qualification to kiss you freely and openly. Am I so qualified now? Now that you've married me, there's no letting go for the rest of our lives. Even if you think I'm selfish, it's too late.
I will make all the red in the land a thing of joy. 